150. In Psalm 150, it's not asking. God is not asking us to do anything, but he is commanding us to do it. And he's commanding us to do it because he is so good to us. So it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him with the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything. praise. Don't you praise him. Praise him for his body work. Praise him for his awesome works. Praise him because he has been good to you. Praise him because you have life in your body. Praise him because you're not on a sick bed. Praise him because you got breath in your lungs. Praise him because he's providing. Praise him because he made a way. Praise him because you're no longer in darkness. Praise him because you're not depressed. Praise him for where you're at right now. Let everything that have breath. Let everything that is not tied down with COVID, not tied down with the flu, not tied down with water in your lungs. If you got breath in your body, why don't you praise him? If you're in your right mind, why don't you praise him? If you know that you are blessed, if you know that you are blessed, praise him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My God, you praise him for what he has done. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? I don't know about you, I feel good. I know I look good. And I am blessed. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Hallelujah! Hallelujah, my God, a liberation of praise for what God has done. God is good. Hallelujah, it's only been 13 days, it can't be that tough, it can't be that bad. We just got into a new year, we just got here. We've got a clean slate, so praise him for there's no disaster. No calamity. Family's good. You in the house of the Lord. Why don't you praise him? Hallelujah. My God. My God, my God, my God. God is good. God is good. Doesn't it feel good to be good in the house of the Lord? On a Sunday morning. Come on, we're here. We in his presence. We're around the brothers and sisters in the faith. Come on. I feel good. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So we thank you, Father. And we come before you, Lord God, with singing, Lord Father God. We are instruments of your praise, Lord Father God. We will magnify you and lift your name up on high, Lord God. We enter into your gates, Lord God, with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Once again, we have a joyful noise of praise. Make way for the King of glory that shall come into your presence to bless you, to see about you, to check on you, to check on his sons and daughters that will call upon his name. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, if you just break loose for a minute, if you just I'm stand up and just move for a little bit, you'll feel good. Hallelujah. Thank 
you, Jesus. exercise right all right got the blood going right get our mind focused on the Lord on this morning amen let's go before the Lord and before his presence even right now in prayer so Lord God we come before you Lord God even right now with a joyful heart Lord God it is not just Lord God a profession out of our mouth Lord God but it's actionable Lord Father God Lord God, we will praise you, Lord Father God, all the days of our life, Lord Father God. And Lord God, when we just think about how great you have been, Lord God, we worship you, Lord Father God. For you are the king of glory, Lord Father God. You are our Lord and our Savior, Lord Father God. You are the righteous judge, Lord Father God. You are the one that stands before us, Lord Father God. And your word says, Lord God, in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Lord God that you are Lord Almighty God Lord Father God so we call upon your name right now Lord Father God and we ask Lord God that you may come into our hearts come into our minds Lord Father God come into this safe space Lord Father God where the King of glory can reign and rule Lord Father God even right now Lord God we need you right now Lord Father God we're here Because we need you right now, Lord Father God. We may come with heavy hearts, Lord God. We may come with heavy minds, Lord Father God. We may come in need of something right now, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that we have never, we have never seen a faithful, Lord Father God, forsaken, Lord Father God. We have never seen your child uh, beg for bread, Lord God. So supply all needs right now, Lord Father God. As we give you all the glory and adoration that belongs unto you and you alone, Lord Father God. So bless this service, Lord Father God. Bless everyone that's going to come forth, Lord Father God. Lead and navigate this service, Lord God, like never before, Lord Father God. This is a new year, Lord God. This is a new season, Lord Father God. And Lord God, we will believe by faith, Lord Father God, that if you be for us, Lord Father God, who can be against us, Lord Father God? So Lord God, God have your way Lord Jesus touch the man of God as he's coming up Lord God use him in a mighty and special way Lord Father God Lord God we believe Lord Father God that you are able Lord God to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask for or think Lord God in your name Lord Jesus we pray and we ask it all and we seal it Lord God with praise Lord Father God we seal it with praise Lord God Lord God, we welcome you in with praise, Lord God. For you are God and God alone, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, feel this place, just want to be with you, just want to be with you, King of glory, King of glory.
just wanna be with you 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 just wanna be just wanna be with you wanna bask in your glory just wanna be with you wanna dance in your presence just wanna be with you just wanna be with you and i will not be silent i will always worship you as long as i am breathing i will always worship you and i will not be silent and i will not be silent i will always worship you as long as i am as long as
worship. Come on and bless him. Come on and lift him up. Because he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sand. Give him worship. Give him worship. Give him praise. Give it to him. Father, receive it. Father, receive it. Father, receive it. Here we are. Once again. Here we are. Once again, receive our worship. No one else like you. Receive our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no There is no one else. There is no 
said, you are, you are. He do miracles so great. There is no one else like you.
I don't know about you, but I came to worship the Lord. For the scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I know, I know that there's a lot going on in the world. I know there's a lot going on in our personal lives. But when you really trust God, the way you should, no matter what's happening around you. You don't let nobody kill your vibe with God. I came to tell the devil today, he ain't going to kill my vibe. Somebody say, he ain't going to mess up my worship. He's not going to take my spirit. When I came to the house today, I came for deliverance. And deliverance is what I will receive. I came for a breakthrough and that's what I will receive. Come on, I came for an answer and that's what I'll receive. Is there anybody that said, listen, if you don't want to worship, hallelujah, you ain't going to stop me, but I got to get my worship on. I wish I had about five people that will lift their voice like a trumpet and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Come on, shout unto the Lord with the voice of trying, that's it, that's it. Lift it up, turn up your worship. Turn up the worship, turn up the worship. If you gotta walk the floor, walk it, baby. If you gotta leave your row in your seat, leave your row, leave your seat. If you gotta leap for it, leap for it because we come to worship the Lord today. We come to give him our all today. We came to give him what he deserves and more. And dear Lord, I probably can't thank you enough, but I'll give it my all. I'll give it my best shot. After all that you've done for me, after all that you brought me out of, after all that you kept me through, after all, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, at this stage in the game, after what we went through in the past four years, understand this, we shouldn't have to pry anybody to worship him. The reality is if you look back over a couple of years ago, a few years ago, there are a lot of people that started out, they're not here right now, but you are still in the land of the living. Come on, y'all. The Lord could have taken you out. You should have lost your life. You should have lost your mind, but look at you. You don't look like what you've been through. Through. Come on, y'all. You don't look like what you've been through. Come on, you even you look better than your story. You look better than your hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, oh my God, oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I came for one thing today, but baby, what you came for, God said, I'm about to flip it on you. came for the word baby if you worship the word himself will speak to you oh my god I say hey, oh my Shandia he didn't open up the Bible this word that I've hit in my heart oh my god oh my god I wish I had about three people that said I'm not starting off the new year stagnant in my wall I'm not starting off 2024 stagnant in my worship stagnant in my prayer life stagnant in my spiritual wall I wish I had three people that will walk out of where you are and said I refuse to be contained I refuse to be confined I refuse to be in prison whom the son set free in free in to step out I dare you to walk out I dare you to go for broke I dare you to go all the way in yeah 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 oh he sets a fire in your soul he sets a fire in your soul. 
you will run for him like never before you will pray like never before you will worship like never before you will travail like never before for this is the season that I'm raising up true worshipers true warriors true praisers true teachers true servants that will carry my glory in the earth realm that will be my representative of the kingdom in the earth realm you will be ambassadors you will be diplomats you will be glory carriers wherever you are things will shift wherever you are things will change wherever you are people will experience blessings wherever you are people will experience god and the king of kings and the lords of lords and the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end because you are there Say I'm there. I'm say I'm here. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god oh my god he shifts the room he shifts the room he shifts the room if the lord tell you to change your seat you better do it if he tell you to change the side that you're sitting on you better do it if he tell you to change who you're sitting next to you better do it for God wants to shift the room God wants to shift the room God wants to shift the room you sit in the same seat every Sunday God said it's time to change where you sit you do the same thing every week God is saying it's time to change it's time to shift it's time for you to come out the box it's time for you to come out of confinement I'm God I am that I I'm infinite in all of my ways. There's a cry in the wilderness. 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 Hey. There's a cry in the wilderness. Hey. Oh. There's a cry in the wilderness. Aye, 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 aye. There's a cry in the wilderness. Hey. There's a cry in the wilderness. Hey. He hears your voice. There's a cry in the wilderness. Hey. There's a cry in the wilderness. 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 spiritually when you begin to predict the move of God that means the church is in trouble 
when church go the way you want it to go every week that means the church is in trouble hallelujah the early church could not reproduce that you did not know what was going to happen from one moment to the next you didn't know where it was going to happen how it was going to happen who he was going to use and God is saying I'm taking my church back not to Constantine time I'm going back to the early apostles how can we dismiss the apostolic move of God and he says it's still needed how can we dismiss the prophetic and he says it's still needed how do we dismiss it how do we dismiss the pastorate when it's still needed you know we believe in the pastor no you believe in the pastor that you can pastor but the pastor that God is raising up in the earth realm of the pastors that he has called and chosen for his glory Can I burst your bubble? The teachers that God was talking about didn't go to seminary. Oh. Oh, let me say that again. The teachers that God were talking was talking about did not go to seminary. The seminary caused most of us to experience a spiritual cemetery. It's needed, but the revelation that you cannot find in a book, the mysteries of God, you won't find it in college. The mysteries of God come from heaven. I need some Bible, I need some Bible, I need some Bible. I'm, who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Wait a minute, the scribes didn't know this. The Pharisees didn't know this. The other folk you have been around did not know this. But this had to come from my father, which is in heaven. And God is starting to realign his church with heaven. We've been experiencing church, but we have not been experiencing heaven. We are partially right. We are partially right. In order for you to get to heaven, you have to die. That's partially right. But in order for you to experience in heaven on earth, you have to die to yourself. You have to crucify your flesh daily. Your flesh has to die daily. Your will your emotion, what you want, what you desire, have to die daily and week after week. Most of us come to church looking for what we expect and what we desire. Suppose somebody came to your house for dinner. You say, I want you to come over for dinner. And they come to your house and they sit down and they complain about everything you did. Why didn't you cook baked ziti instead? Well, I prefer macaroni and cheese. Why, why didn't you have Pepsi? You had Coca-Cola instead. Why did you have Saratoga spring water? And they complain about everything. Well, I, if you arranged the kitchen this way, it would have been better. How would you feel? What would you tell those people that came to your house that you prepared to give them something and they sit there and they complain about everything that you've done to give them what they need. What would you do? What would you say? Come on, what, would you be happy about that? So why do you do it when you come to God's house? God said, come, I prepared a banquet for you. I prepared a feast for you. I want you to worship me today. i got a special mood for you today. And you sitting down, oh, I, you say, I don't know, I'm looking for this. And you're looking for God to come through the front door. He done snuck in through the side of the window. And you're still looking at the front door, still waiting for God. But I came to tell you that God is here. And I came to tell you, Lord, it's your house. It's your will. It's your way. Do what you want to do. Do it how you want to do it dear God if we don't get to preach that's all right as long as you're here touching us as long as you're here delivering us yeah. 
your way. Your way, Lord. Your way. Your way, Jesus. That's okay. What he's doing is perfect. He's yielded to the Father. He's yielded to the Father. That's, that's what the elder is doing is see you got to be careful when you go to churches and the leaders don't worship if you can't worship you can't lead if you go to church and the pastor don't worship you at the wrong church it ain't no, when, you, when you really love the Lord there's no time for making a grand entry the pastor done stayed downstairs the whole worship service. Come up, make a grand entrance. Ten people to take him from his office. Need ten people for them to go to the bathroom. All of but I came to tell the devil today that this is a worshiping house. This is a house of prayer. This is a house of praise. And the reality is, the reality is that there's no specific way to worship. Because as, if, as we're sitting in this atmosphere right now, the Lord is reaching his hand towards his people. His right hand is extended to you. You're very smart, Ashley. I like that because since he's extended his hand to me, I'll extend my hands to him. See? Because we're in an age now where Information is at our disposal. But we still don't know God. We, we are in a time now where everybody care about how they look on stream. I don't want them to see me worshiping. I don't want them to see. No, 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 baby. No. God extended our reach. If you are a light, why would you hide your light? I want them to see me worshiping. I want them to see me go for broke at the altar. I, I want them to see me get my, they saw me smoke weed. They see me, they saw me drink. They saw me whore around. They saw me terrorize the neighborhood. They heard me cussing. Watch me worship now. Watch me worship. Watch me worship. I want you to see that the enemy tried to kill me, but I'm still alive. I want them to see that the enemy tried to knock me down, but I'm still standing. I want them to see that the enemy tried to shut me up, but I still have my voice. I still have my mouth. I still have my worship. I still have my praise. And what the enemy meant for evil. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, give them something to talk about. Give them something to talk about. Give them, give, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch me worship. Watch me praise. Watch me dance. Yeah, I still dance. I just change partners. That's how you, that's it. See, see, I like, see, I love the noisy saints. See, the Bible, see, God like noise. He didn't say enter his gates with a muzzle on your mouth. Oh, we have to be quiet because, you know, I don't want to 
disturb nobody. No, 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 no. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise him with the cymbals. Praise him with the hand claps. Praise him with the organ. Praise him with the strings. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Let everything that have breath. God said, I want to hear some noise. I, I've been quiet about a lot of things, baby. But one thing I won't be quiet about is my worship, my praise, and my God. He's been too good to me. Oh, my soul just magnify the Lord for all the good things that he has done. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? We're the worshipers. Come on. We're the radical saints. Where, where, yeah, 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 yeah. where, where y'all at? We're the tongue talkers. Where, where y'all at? Where, where, the, where the church runners? Where, where, where y'all at? Where, where are the leapers? Where, where y'all at? Where, where you at? I had money and my money couldn't help me. I, I had a car, my car couldn't get me the way I wanted to go. I, I, I had a roof, but that still didn't cover me properly. I, I've been through a lot of stuff and I could say, oh, it was for the grace of God. And if it had not been the Lord on my side, where would I be? Is there anybody that got that kind of testimony? Can anybody testify that said, I've been through the pit, I've been in a prison, I've been through the mud, I've been through the fire, but look at God, baby. I am living proof.
this is a free house. I want more of you. I want more. Just us and God. I want more of you. I want more of you. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my And I can't contain. And I can't contain. And I can't contain. And I want more. I want more of you. Fill me up until I overflow. Restore unto you with the caterpillar and the canker worm is eaten up. For your ladder shall be greater than your former. He knows every storm that you endure. He knows everything that you smile through. And he knew your
oppression is being released. The pressure, the weight is being lifted in the name of Jesus. Somebody scream glory. Somebody scream glory. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. You will never, you'll never, you'll never, you'll never be the same again. for you now and he's doing it for you now and he's doing it for you now and then he's doing it for you now hey and then he's doing it for you now hallelujah and he's doing it for you now he's breathing on you hallelujah that's it and he's giving it to you jesus that i can't contain that i can't control I want more. I count to three, squeeze my hand as tight as you can. You go set your soul on fire. One, two, three. before it burns like never before it burns like never before it consumes it strengthens it builds it fortifies it purifies I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. Is burning right now. It's burning right now. It's burning right now. It's burning oh, right now. Oh. It's burning right now. 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 Is burning right now. Burning right now. Fire, fire, fall fresh from us, Jesus. Send your fire down. See, we talked. 
talked about scribes and Pharisees last week and we talked about the sinners that came to Jesus and they judged Jesus because of the sinners that came we talked about the prodigal son we talked about two sons left home one left the house physically but one left in his heart one wasted what the father gave him the other one wasted the father's presence because if the one that stayed home honored the father if the one that stayed home gleaned from the father that he was around, his response would have been different when the other son came home. And what happens is, the son that stayed home represents the scribes and the Pharisees, the self-righteous people, the one that write the law, those that studied the law. But the sinners represent the ones that need Jesus and what he has to offer. And if there are some scribes and Pharisees in the room, they would be judging the people that are going in with their worship and their reserve. But the thing is, when you realize how much you need God, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't even matter where you are, what you have, what you don't have. The thing is, when you begin to worship God, he gives you what you need. See, worship reveals the heart of God. <laughs> but worship is intimate. It's intimate, which means when you're worshiping God, you get in God and God gets in you. It's personal. It's intimate. See, in worship, you are transformed. Okay. Genesis 1.26. I was going to preach from manuscript, but I can't. The flow is too good to do that. He says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. That's the character. Let's, let's, let's give them our character. But watch this. Not only did he form them from the dust of the earth in Genesis 2. It was personal. He spoke everything else into existence. But when it came to making us. He got his hands dirty. Not only did he get his hands dirty, Sister Smith, but then after he formed us from the dust of the earth, he blew his breath inside of us. That was an intimate moment. That, 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 that was personal. That, and we took on his character. Yeah. We were like him. When he looked at us, he saw himself. We, we ruled like he would. He, he gave us the authority to name things. He, he gave us the authority to set things in order and put things in place. That was his character. We fellowship with him, with his voice in the cool of the day. It was with his word. It was in the worship. Come on, y'all. And I'm telling you right now, and we are having a garden of Eden experience right now because God is breathing in us again. He's not just breathing on us. He's, he's breathing in us again. We are coming alive again. We are getting joy again. We are being filled with his goodness. We are being filled with his love. We are being filled with the fruit all over again. And what's the point of coming to the spot if you ain't going to let him breathe in you? Let him breathe in me. Somebody say, breathe in me, Jesus. Don't just breathe on me. I don't need AC today. I just need you to breathe in me. I don't need air conditioner. I need new life. I need new strength. I need a revival down on the inside of my soul. I, I need to step back into my rightful place. I need to step back into my authority that you have given me from the beginning of time. Yeah, we talked about the fallen man, but today this is the rising man. I'm getting up in Christ. I'm coming alive in Christ. Somebody say, I'm no longer in a fallen state. I'm getting up.
worship. Somebody say worship. The heart of Christ is a heart of worship. That's what we've been talking about, right? The heart of Christ is the heart of worship. The heart of worship means I just want to please my father. A narcissist wouldn't worship somebody else. A selfish person would not worship God. They're so self-absorbed. But is there anybody in the room that said it's not about me, it's not about what I want, but I just want to please my father? Jesus, when, he, when you have the heart of Christ, you don't have time to be distracted by nothing else. If it does not please the Father, it's a distraction. Let me say it again. If it does not please the Father, it's a distraction. Are you, what are you distracted by? Because good things can become a distraction. You need your job, but you don't need your job more than you need God. Because you can have a job and still not have resource. But you can be without a job and every need could be met. Favor could be granted to give you things that money can't buy. Yeah. Anybody ever been in that kind of place? Come on, y'all. A heart of worship said, I'm just desperate to please my father. Outside of pleasing my father, what's the point of living? If I can't please my father, I'd rather die. Life is pointless if you're not pleasing the father, the creator, the purpose giver the author and the finisher of your faith. A life of worship is what? Pleasing the Father. And that's when you know that you have the heart of Christ. Even because, even when Jesus' good friend died and Mary and Martha, he used to go to their house when he was in town. They would cook for him. They, they would set the table for him. And they, he would recline at the table and he would eat. Those were his besties. Those were his good friends. But even when Lazarus got sick, he could not rush. And his response was, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day because when night come, no man could work. Because it's about pleasing the one. That's the heart of worship. A heart of worship is just pleasing the Father, submitting to the Father. Somebody say, yeah, the heart of Christ is a life of worship. It's a heart of worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you, when you, when you really want to please the Father, you, you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. See, people that have the heart of Christ are not prideful. They're not prideful. Jesus was not prideful. When you look at even, even uh, Luke 15, the people that were religious were prideful. Because the law gave them a reason to boast within themselves. It was about what they could do and what they've done and how they did it and how they looked in front of people. But I'm in a season of my life now. I don't care about how I look in front of people. I want my heart to be right. Somebody say the Christ heart. The Christ heart. And I'm finished. I'm finished. Let me just, I want, I want to give you some scripture. Because I'm short, but I'm getting tall in the spirit. I just reached it. I'll reach it. You saw God give me two more inches. Because we all have desires. We all have desires. Some people want a new job. Some people want to start their business. Some people want to go back to school. Some people have a desire to, to, to pay off their student loans and get out of debt. Come on, y'all. Somebody have a desire to get a new bay, a new boo. Come on, y'all. Somebody have a desire to get married. Come on. Buy a new house, get a new condo, find a new apartment. Whatever it is, we have a desire. Somebody say desire. Retire. So, so we all have desire, that strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. My only desire is to have the heart of Christ. To have the Christ heart. The Christ, somebody say the Christ heart. 
Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with having other desires, but the ultimate desire should be you having the Christ heart. See, see, God revealed his heart to us. God revealed his heart to us through his son. The son is the heartbeat. The son was moving to the rhythm of heaven. Jesus moved to the drum beat of heaven. He was kingdom minded. His agenda was the Father's agenda. Before Jesus did any miracles, before Jesus did any work, understand that the Father was already pleased with him because of the posture of his heart. You don't believe me? When Jesus got baptized, by John, Jesus didn't perform any miracles. He didn't turn the water into wine. He didn't heal the sick. He didn't raise the dead. He didn't do anything. What Jesus did, he, all he did was get baptized. And the Father spoke from heaven. The Holy, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove and said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Some of us are distracted by works while we are not focused on the posture of our hearts. You can do all the work that you want to do. You can pray for 10,000 people in one day but have the wrong posture. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? The son that stayed home, he stayed home. But when the other son came home, how you giving him this? I, I, I was here and I didn't leave. I was here. You didn't do this for me. Just like the people that are in church every Sunday. Same people that could quote Genesis to Revelation. People that could speak in tongues. I'll shut up a hundred. They nose up in the air at everybody else because they're the only one righteous. They ain't never do nothing. They out there in the street, but you in the church doing what they're doing in the street. They gossiping out there, but you in here gossiping. That's crazy how they treated that man walking by, but you treat your own children like crap. So, don't tell me what you're doing out of religion. Let's look at the relationship. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the posture of the heart was off. Now, I, I, I want to throw this in here real quick because I'm done. Get somebody, put, give me a time check. That sounds good to me. Most of us have this saying, God knows my heart. Anybody ever said that? The Lord, when you, come on, lift your hands. I ain't going to church Sunday, but God knows my heart. Come on, anybody? Tell us, I want to, because y'all be, y'all know, see y'all in here lying. Y'all Y'all know y'all said it. I know I don't go to, I was going to go Sunday, but the Lord know my heart. I was going to pray, but God knows my heart. You know, I was going to read my Bible today, but God knows my heart. Yeah, he does. Somebody say he does. I'm going to drop this bomb on you, and I'm going to come back next week and drop 10 more bombs on you. Sound good? Sound, that sound good? Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, God knows our heart. Aren't you glad that God knows your heart? Come on, how many people glad that know that God loves your heart? Lift your hand. Say, I'm glad he knows my heart. Let me tell you what he said about your heart, though. Can I tell you? Down south, they would say, look a here. They would say this down south, look a here. Listen here now. He knows your heart. Yeah, he knows my heart. Yes. God knows my heart. Yes, yes. The NLT says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked who really knows how bad it is but I the Lord that search all hearts and examine your secret motives God knows your heart oh baby he knows your heart but what are your intent what are your motives You ain't doing 
doing nobody no, no favor. You ain't doing nobody no favor. People know the heart you have. Because when, when things don't go your way, your energy change. What was that loving person I met? Thank you, Mamiya. So, the thing is, your heart is desperately, deceitfully wicked. Your heart. Your heart. Somebody say, my heart. That's why I can't. I need a new heart. I need a heart transplant. David said, created me a clean heart, Psalm 51, and renew the right spirit in me. I need, somebody said, I need, a, I, need a, I need a good heart. There's some stuff I think I shouldn't think. There's some things I feel I shouldn't feel. I'll be smiling and cussing some of y'all out at the same time. You, Lord, I, I, I don't want to just smile on my face, but I want my heart to smile. And when you see my heart, I want you to smile. And we have to stop making excuses for wicked hearts. The Lord working on me. How long? How long? Some of us use that as a defense matter. The Lord working to let people know how we really feel. No, 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 no. How long? Because if he really working on you, you don't have to make announcements. The change will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to take the prescription. Not prescription, the prescription. In church, we have prescription. So watch this. First Samuel says, verse 16 and 7. Man look at the outward, but I look at the heart. What's the point of dressing up the outside? What's the point of fixing your hair if your heart is nappy? <laughs> What's the point of putting on the finest fragrances if your heart is funky? What's the point? What's the point? We were talking about this earlier. We, a lot of times we do a lot of cosmetic work. You know them houses they want to fix up real quick and sell? They, they don't fix the plumbing, they don't fix the electrical, they don't fix none of that stuff. They just fix everything up, make it look good, and you all excited. Oh, yeah. And then you buy the house, you got a whole heap of hell. Because they did cos cosmetic work. And everything was rusted and damaged and messed up. Now you're caught with a headache. God says, stop doing cosmetic work. What's the point of going to the gym if your heart is not fit? So we're going to leave you there. I just want to give you something to think about. So when we come back next week, we won't act like we are really worshiping. But we will really worship him. And I'm out of here. The Lord said to me, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, when we think about worship, we think about the arts. Music, the dancing, the rhythm. And some people feel like they can't worship because they don't have all of that. And I said, so Lord, what about those people? He said, don't worry about that. He said, number one, he said, their lies are the melody to my ears. Your life is the melody to God's ear. Your life is the sweet fragrance to God's nostrils. But when your heart ain't right, when you're doing it from a place of religiosity, understand. He said, I don't want that. Because if you was a true worshiper, you would not have treat people. If you are a true worshiper, you would be able to hang out with sinners, but not do what sinners do. See, when you're a true worshiper, you could sit with sinners, but not sip with them. Y'all didn't catch that. I didn't catch that. Y'all didn't catch that. Yeah. You can go in saved and come out saved. 
and somebody else will leave changed because you were there. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, check the posture of your heart. You need the Christ heart because you heard what Jeremiah just told us. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Well, somebody blessed by the service today. My sister, I love you. I love, I love you, my sister. That's my Brooklyn crew over there. That's my girl. Amen. I love her. And at this moment, I like that song. And you need to make a change. You ought to look at the man and the woman in the mirror. Got to make a change. I want to make a change in my life. I want everybody to stand in this room. If you're in this house and you did not receive the Lord as your Savior, this is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. Do it. It's the time for you to make a change. Make a change. The change begins now. God wants you. He said you can come even right now. No matter how far you are, no matter how low you are, no matter how high you are, he can reach you. He wants you. If you feel God tugging on your heart, just lift your hand where you are and say, I just want to give my life to him today. Amen. I see a hand. Anybody else? He's doing something new in you. If you're online watching, it tells us that Romans 10 and 9, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. So, repeat after me, Lord, I come to you as a sinner. I'm asking you to come into my life, live your life in me and through me. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus the Christ, to die for my sins, and he rose again for my salvation. You said, if I confess this and get my heart posture right, <laughs> I will be saved. So thank you for saving me. Amen. And I'm so excited that the whole church said it today, because some of y'all needed to be saved again. Amen. And if you're glad that he saved you all over again, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord. And is there anyone that don't have a church home? If you don't have a church home, we would like this to be your church home. This is the most perfect place for the most imperfect people. But we become better together. Amen. And I'm telling you that we will willingly receive you with open arms. This is a blessed house. I said again, this is a blessed house. I just said one more time for the Holy Ghost. This is a blessed house. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is doing something new in here. And we, I'm glad because I know it's, it's the Lord that's doing it. It's the Lord that's doing it. Amen. And I'm just, I'm just rolling with Jesus and watching him do what he do. Amen. So we thank God for each of you. And if you would like to join the church, if you would like to give your life to the Lord, if you're here, if you've given your life to the Lord, see Sister Liz, our Sister Lexi. Our sister Betty, look over in that corner in that section over there, those three ladies. Lift your hands high so they can see you. Wave your hands in the air. Wave them like it's just all right. Amen. See, one of those ladies there, and they will gladly walk you through. 
Amen. The process. Amen. Did y'all enjoy the word today? Amen. I did. I did. I really did. I enjoyed the worship today because when you worship God and he's moving, the word himself moves. Amen. Um, and listen, we're going to go into our, we're going to prepare for our offering, but we also have announcements as well. Amen. And we want to thank God for our Wednesday night. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Wasn't it beautiful? Come on, if you was here, make some noise. Amen. It was amazing. Amen. Wednesday night was amazing. Amen. We came from a back of two. We do make, write the vision, make it plain. Okay, that read it will run with it. And we thank God because we did not have traditional Bible study. Amen. But our elder Lord was led of the spirit. Amen. To do a vision board on it. Amen. So that was a form of writing the vision and making it plain. And listen, God is out of the box. Christ is out of the box. And so am I. Amen. And I'm glad to see the people that were blessed. There were some people talking about, y'all doing it next week? I say, yeah, we, we might just pick it on up. Amen. And we know that this Friday, somebody say this Friday, at 730, amen, we are having revival. Amen. We have our joint revival, and it's going to be big. Amen. It's going to be huge, and it's going to be powerful. Amen. And when I call revival, I call revival for the church. Amen. I call revival for the church. And if I call revival for the church, the church should be here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me say it again. If I call a revival for the church, the church should be here. Amen. No, I don't want to hear no excuses. Amen. Because when we we call in the revival, when God sets revivals, amen, or there's a move of God and most of the church miss it, you throw the balance. I don't want you to, don't you hinder the ministry. Amen. Get here to that revival. Get to the revival. If you can hear my voice, if you're sitting here, get to the revival. If you are a member, get to the revival. Stop chasing things and get with God. If you, if you run for God, you ain't got to chase nothing else. Hallelujah. You never, give God a chance to prove himself to you. Amen. Get to the revival. And I'm telling you, that God is going to speak to you. This is a move of God. Tell your cousin if you come, get to the revival. Tell somebody to come to this revival. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be life changing. And I want the intercessors, the prayer warriors, because we all are intercessors. But I want everybody to pray for a Friday night's revival. I want you to pray for it because anytime there's a great move of God getting ready to happen, we understand that there's going to be some type of resistance. There's a pull. Amen. So we want you to prepare for the revival. Fasting and praying. We are in our 21 days of fasting and it's personal. I didn't tell you what to give up. What did you give up? It's personal. Because the next fast is coming and it's going to be very different. 40 days. Amen. It's going to be 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, get ready for that. Amen. And, and it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up in the spirit. Amen. It's not time to be, I don't understand. No, 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 no. Get in the spirit so you can understand the things of God. Amen. And that's the revival. Our preacher is uh, Minister Sheree Thomas. Amen. And she will be bringing uh, forth the word that night. And it's going to be powerful. It's our joint revival. Amen. So if we're going to be full, please wear your mask. Amen. Please wear a mask. Bring a mask with you. Bring a mask. Amen. We encourage you to wear your mask. Amen. If you're feeling sick or something, wear your mask. Amen. Do that. If you take your COVID test and they say positive, stay home. Watch it online and we'll send the word. Amen. And don't somebody fake like they got COVID on Friday night. Amen. One of my, um, amen, Sister Melinda, Sister Melinda on in Brooklyn, she's one of the head supervisors at a hospital in Coney Island. And one of the nurses, the nurses was sending the same COVID test by picture into the, the department. 
and everybody was all of the, all the nurses was home for five days for the same COVID test. Somebody said, "Wait a minute!" And they caught on, and they brought it to us. She said, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> so listen, you know, some people know how to beat the system, but you can't beat God's system. Come on, y'all. So listen. So those, those are the announcements for this week. We will be here Wednesday at 7.30. 7.30, amen. We pushed the time to 7.30. A lot of people coming from work, traffic. So we pushed it to 7.30 and it's working out fine. I'm a pastor that believe if it's not working, let's make a change. Amen. Some people will some people, some people be dying a slow death. And still, we, we've been doing it for 50 years. It ain't working. <laughs> amen. If it ain't working, change. Until you find what works. Amen. Praise the Lord. So at this time, what, when, what time is the revival? 7.30. So leaders don't come here at 7.26. Leaders do not get here at 7.26. Get here at 7 o'clock, 7.15. Amen. Church should be open, not at 729. The church doors opening up. You open up the church early. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm the pastor. I don't mind working, but guess what? The church should be open before I get here too, but I get here early. Praise the Lord. So let's make sure we are on point. Amen. And on and on time. And we we and come prepared to give. Look at somebody say, come prepared to give. Come prepared to give. Because we go so into that atmosphere on Friday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I was taught if you want to if you want to sit high, you got to pay high. That's old school. You want to sit high, everybody will lead into his offering time. Praise the Lord. Remember they say, I remember they say, all the pastors here, I want y'all to give a hundred. Everybody, everybody, they went down to a minister then. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. But if we go sit high, amen. I tell them, I told them out there in Brooklyn too, y'all. Whatever I call, y'all be ready to give it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So listen, at this time, what we're going to do, we're going to give our offering. We're going to, we're not paying our tithes. We don't pay tithes. We bring it. Amen. Because we can't pay God. Amen. We have our Deacon Bynum standing, our Minister Trail standing. We have our Sister Russell standing. Amen. With card. And we're going to ask everyone to stand and let this offering may be blessed. We're going to bless it now. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every giver, every sower. Dear God, we're asking you, dear God, to lead them and in, in, in to instruct them on what to give. And when you tell them what to give, let them be obedient to it. Dear God, we're asking you to bless this offering tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. Dear God, let the hearts be right as they are given. Because it's not all about how much you give but it's about how you give. So dear God, we're asking you to help us to give with the right heart posture that you will be glorified, that your house will be blessed and our houses will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask for some good marching music, some kind of something, something. I don't know, it sound whatever it is. We're going to follow the instructions of our floor keepers, amen. Our Elder Lewis, amen. amen, 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 praise the Lord. And I love you. Listen, please be mindful that we are still in worship. We are still in worship. Amen, we are still in worship. Amen. Your worship is not a part of giving. Giving is not a part of worship, but it is worship. Amen. We thank God for all of our visitors and our friends. God bless you. God bless you. I pray you. Boy, y'all bless. You enjoyed yourself? If you said you enjoyed it, I believe it. I'm glad you did. Praise the Lord, and I love you all. And whatever the Lord gave y'all today, you take it with you. The peace of God that's a pass of all understanding and comfort you. Hallelujah. My sister, I love you. I love you. Amen. And I want. Love Minister Johnson. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up.
our sister Cheryl on the door today. Look at her. Come on, Sister Cheryl. Now, Sister Jackie. Come on, y'all. Y'all holding it down. Pray for those that you do not see. Pray for our sister Linda Williams. Amen. That's, amen. She's a little under the weather, but we believe that the Lord is going to bring her through. She'll be over the weather soon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, we're asking you that we're going to be praying in advance for our sister Mill, our mother Millie. Amen. She looked good, y'all. Don't she look good? That's my, that's my girl. She, she was always matching sneakers, matching sweatsuit. She better go on with her bad self. She better go ahead. Amen. But she'll be having a procedure later this week. But we know that the Lord is going to take her in, take her through, and bring her out with victory. Amen. Give it up our season, saints. Give it up our season, saints. Our mother Reese, our mama Faye, amen. And our deaconess Johnson, thank God for you. Our mama back there, we thank God for all of you. Y'all are amazing. Listen, y'all, Sister Dessa, you didn't get to dance today. But the Spirit said no. But we, see, I like people that roll with the Spirit. When he moved, we moved just like that. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, if anybody would like to, uh, y'all know I'm, I'm on the A train to Brooklyn. Amen. But listen, my, num my number's the same. My, my Facebook, my IG, you can hit me up anywhere and I will respond. How many people hit me up and I respond? Amen. I will respond. Amen. You a BLM. Let me stop. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my hope. And we glad to see our mother Smith, our sister Naomi Smith, back in the house. Come on, y'all. She was away for a while, tending to our sister as well. Amen. But we're glad to see her face in the place. And I, and I, I, I was like, I know she's doing some things. That's why I didn't want to bother. But I called up on Saturday. I left a voicemail. I said, all right now. There ain't going to be too many more. Amen. But she's here today. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love my church. I love my church. I love my church because it ain't no ship like friendship. There ain't no ship like friendship. I said it ain't no ship. See, if I ever have a party, I'm, I'm bringing Sister Liz. I'm like, we gonna turn up. Man, Liz, are tear, we'll tear it up together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, let us all stand. Be dismissed. Be dismissed. <laughs> give it up for my sister Ebony. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for my sister Ebony. Listen, that's a quiet storm there. We ain't turned her loose yet. We done turned Taylor loose. Amen. The other revival. Amen. For watch night. Amen. She a preacher, singer, teacher, saxophone player, book writer. She does it all. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. We got our Ebony. She has ministry. Amen. Women from all over the place gather. Amen. She mentor women. She preach. She teach. She, she does it all. Deliverance. She does it all. Amen. And I'm proud to call her my sister. That's, that's a mayor's wife, but that's my sister. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we're going to turn her loose. We're going to be turning a lot of y'all loose in here soon. Amen. Because we got some powerful women and men of God in this house. Amen. Some of y'all don't even know it yet, but one day I'm going to just throw y'all the mic. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Y'all think I'm playing with y'all. Y'all. JB think I'm playing with him. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to give it to Deacon Hunter, too. He look like a preacher, too. Look at him. I heard him say. <laughs> Oh, Lord. That's how we grew up, but amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this wonderful fellowship, service, this worship experience, and a wordship experience here at Friendship. Dear God, we're asking you to continually strengthen us and build us up to have the right heart posture. And dear God, we know that it's in worship that you reveal your heart to us. Dear God, that we will desire even the more to have a heart just like you. God, we're asking you to keep us covered under the blood as we leave from this place. But never from this presence. In Jesus' name. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within our hearts hence now and forevermore and let us all sing it y'all amen 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 and please I'm going to sing it on 
February 7th, we are having a men and women's gathering, which will involve a good discussion on married, on being married and being single. We're going to have some married couples on the platform and some single folk on the platform. We just go keep it a hundred. Is that all right? Amen. We gonna keep it a hundred. So look for keep keep that in mind. February seventh at seven o'clock. We'll be right here. We're gonna have the setup. We gonna have the couch and all of that. We gonna have it. We gonna do it up in here. All right. And we won't be streaming live. We won't be streaming live. Amen. We won't stream live for that. Everything is not for live. Amen. Come out and be a live studio audience. Amen. So come and enjoy it. Bring some single folks, some married folk. Hear what these married and single people have to say. I won't be on the platform, praise God, right? I won't be on the platform, praise God. Amen. I'll be Martel Williams. And what you say? We have a question over here. Amen. That's why. Praise the Lord. So we are dismissed. God bless you.